Thank you very much, Jan. Thank you very much to the Swedish Energy Agency for inviting us here to come to wonderful Berlin to present. So my name is Johan Sandberg. I'm the CEO of this Swedish technology developer called Seatwell. So I'm here to tell you a little bit about what I call the third generation of wind power. The first generation of wind power is on land, onshore. The second generation of wind power is in the sea, but it's attached to the seabed. The third generation of wind power is floating wind turbines. It's for the deep oceans where you cannot attach anything to the seabed apart from the big mooring lines that will keep uh, the turbines uh, where they're supposed to be. So the world's oceans are deep. We are fortunate in the north of Europe to have some shallow areas where offshore wind was developed to begin with, in Denmark, here in Germany, in southeast England and so on. But as soon as you go to Scotland, Norway, Ireland, the entire Atlantic coastline, big parts of the Baltic Sea, the entire Mediterranean Sea, and not least uh, the Pacific and, and the East Asian countries. So if you take Southeast Asia, Indonesia, Philippines, where much of the, and India and so on, where much of the new emissions will come from, they have rather deep waters and they need floating wind turbines in order to develop large amounts of renewable energy. So floating wind turbines is a must-win battle for the climate, in my opinion. And just to give you an illustration of where offshore wind is today. Uh, this is the projected market growth of floating wind turbines specifically. We see that beyond 2030, we will have a real hockey stick type of development where Europe alone will have more than 100 billion market value of floating wind turbines alone. And as you can see, until 2050, that's going to continue to grow all over the world. This is what conventional offshore wind looks like today. To the left, you see what these wonderful machines look like. This is the new Vestas 15 megawatt machine. It is approximately six or 700 tons of steel or, or equipment that has to be lifted almost 200 meters up into the air. And it's perfectly possible if you are in shallow waters. You can do that with these enormous ships that is now being developed and which is obviously doing a fantastic job. But as soon as you go floating, you have to do all this work and also the maintenance in, in shore, in land, in the harbor. And if you need to do it, you need to take the turbine back to the harbor. The turbine market today looks like this. We have three European turbine suppliers and we have three Chinese turbine suppliers. The entire capacity for the European turbine suppliers is just 3.8 gigawatts per year. The targets set by European politicians, signed by Ursula von der Leyen, the prime ministers and so on, is more than 170 gigawatts by 2030. There is an enormous gap in the wind turbine supply chain here. We think there is room for another wind turbine supplier, at least in this, in this market. So why C12? Well, the key feature about SeaTrawl is that we have a vertical axis wind turbine, as you can see on this picture. Why? Because you bring the generator house down to the surface, where you can access it with conventional small vessels. We have made the design so that you're able to use even a 20-ton crane to do all the heavy maintenance on the generator house down on the surface. The other key feature is that because you have the generator house down on the surface, the bending moment, which you would normally have at the top of the tower, is obviously significantly reduced, and therefore you will have much, much less steel in your structure. We think we can have more than a thousand tons less steel in our structure compared to any other of the floating wind turbine structures out there. A thousand tons per turbine. So it's not just a cost of energy story, it's also a sustainability and a raw material story that, that we have here. Our route to a utility-scale turbine to be a competitor in the big uh, projects is to go through uh, smaller turbine first, smaller turbines first. We have these two models that you see in the beginning. The first pilot or prototype was installed in 2015. The other two are now under full development with customers. We are working with specific sites out in the North Sea to, to develop these turbines for specific applications. 
And we're pretty confident that we can have them in the water in the next couple of years and then take the next step up to the utility scale turbines. So what do we need? We think we need approximately 20 million euro for taking this big step up to 2026 and then another 20 million euro to go up to the utility scale turbine to have a product ready for the big hockey stick curve that comes around 2030. That's what we are. So welcome to talk to me later. Thank you.